terms. And it, it, go ahead, please come up and state your name and address for the record. My name is Paul Smithers, resident at 1055 Locust Street. And uh, may I have permission to address the... Oh, yes. Yes. We'll pass these around to each other. I'm here to kind of act as a spokesperson for those of us who live in what's known as the old Black Swamp area, uh, specifically my concerns between 7th and South Boundary. Uh, I realize the pictures you're looking at are nothing new. You've seen all those yourself in your own yards. What you may not be so aware of. Uh, is the fact that how often we have to put up with it in that particular area. I have a bit of an advantage uh, because I had my home built 55 years ago on that location. And uh, so obviously I've gone through a lot of years of this. I recall during the construction of my home uh, that there was a tile. Uh, when they dug the foundation, I could see that the tile had been cut from the backyard coming up. and. Uh, Obviously, back then, they didn't do anything about that. They just put a plug on it, and so uh, we have no particular title. So the point being, uh, of all the years we've been there, uh, some of the things I've experienced was neighbors coming in and building a home and then adding fill dirt to the backyard, a couple of them, and to my neighbor, and I had made a comment to the city, and they came out and forced them to remove some of that dirt, simply because that's all supposed to out and back state level to everybody else. Uh, the irony of all that was they, they had put in about six inches of dirt and took off about three, which obviously didn't do a thing. Uh, so for the rest of us, we keep, every time somebody does anything at all, we tend to get boxed in with a little bit more water. So that's a little history. We've gone through this for all these years. The question I have is, several years ago, I was here at a meeting and we talked about those tree streets out there that needed to have some type of access to drainage. Uh, I was informed uh, by a gentleman uh, that we came out and looked at the yard and said, oh, he said, you're quite open. Uh, unfortunately, down here at South Boundary, apparently the, the, the storm sewer isn't deep enough to have a, a fall. They would take it, all the water there, but there was concern that they would come up with something for the street between Locust and Maple, which I'm specifically talking about. So the reason I'm here is just to ask, where are we? Are there any plans uh, to help us with our problem? Uh, and the reason I ask that is, any time I could have brought in loads of dirt to fill my yard up, which would have messed my neighbors up, I would have paid the price for that and then turn around the city would do something in the meantime and then we would be assessed and I would wind up with a double bill. Thus, for 55 years I've done nothing, and as all the neighbors have. We've been waiting for the city to come up with something that can help us alleviate our pain of the water. What I'm referring to is, is we lose plants, we lose trees, because they get submerged so long that they can't survive. And, and that's really what some of our problem is. I don't mind water. I flood my yard as much as you want, but drain it one day, I'd be very happy. Uh, the problem is, is like now, we'll have water in our yard until well tomorrow, which is going to be more rain, and it's going to go back to the first picture on there, which will be a, quite a bit of water. So we can't get into our yards to mow or anything else for a week at a time. And so that, that is the concern I have, and it just would like to know if there's anything the city is planning so that we in our minds know what we can do. We know we can't fill our yards up because that's not, we're not allowed to do that. That's code for whatever, that's, that's, what, that's what we were told when we built, so. So um, just to, I can't give you some updates. I know we, we did a um, stormwater master plan for the Grassy Creek watershed, which is south of Grassy Creek. I'm actually looking at the plan right now from Hazen and Sawyer. I will kind of relay to our public utilities director on uh, where we are with um, uh, on any projects with this or if there is any projects that are, are coming on this. And I believe uh, you've probably experienced some of this yourself. Yes. <laughs> and, and just this year has to be one of the worst because it's been one of the wettest. I mean, we got over a foot of rain in October alone. Nothing, 
no system can be worked. Right. Um, yes, we um, we did the uh, Grassy Creek Master Plan, and one of the alternatives was putting in a, a, a express storm sewer to the river. Um, one of the options was putting in um, storm sewers to drain into drain directly to Grassy Creek, but the issue there is that adding additional stormwater uh, flow to Grassy Creek would cause it to exceed its banks, which there are times when that happens anyway. Um, the report also looked at various uh, basins and um, the express storm sewer, so to speak, that was $11 million. And so we, uh, we have not moved ahead on that, but we have in the capital improvement plan um, a sum of money to form a stormwater utility, and that's programmed for 2024. Now maybe that needs to be moved up. Um, the stormwater utility what is, the, um, is the preferred option because then that will um, be a mechanism to, to collect stormwater fees from benefiting properties and then use that, those funds to build stormwater infrastructure. As you know, right now, we're funding the stormwater program from wastewater rates, which is um, not ideal. It's better to uh, charge based on property size, impervious area, and so forth. Um, the dollar amounts are large, and we uh, don't have a mechanism to absorb those kind of dollars in the wastewater fund. So, so if the stormwater utility plan gets up and running, would that be funding for the express plan or what, what would that be funding for? It would uh, fund priority projects over a number of years. Um, the express storm sewer would get the water out of, of this area and, um, and then not impact Grassy Creek. Um, there may be Ohio EPA permitting challenges with that. Um, so it's really a funding mechanism is what yes. you're referring to, so yes. that it doesn't come out of our sanitary right. funds. Right. So if, if these homes were being built today, there's hardly a development that goes in that does not have a Detention or detention pond. Correct. So, so I don't know that we have one inside the boundaries at all. Do, I mean, anywhere to maybe Grassy Creek would be that avenue. Yeah, I can't picture a detention basin inside the boundaries. Um, as you may know, Valley Brook subdivision; uh, those are uh, built more recently, and those were designed to hold stormwater in the backyards. In and the backyards. Yes. And Dolly yes. Brook is the one over there by Grace Crossing. Is that what you're yes. talking about? Yes. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yes. And, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but the latest trend towards stormwater is to not have the instant dumping into the creeks and rivers because that contributes to flooding at that point and further down. You want the retention. You want to slow it up. You want to drain it off the properties to a place where it slows up enough, like retention yeah. ponds and right. stuff, before it dumps, so you don't get flooding in the creek and right. river. So yes, if you're developing a green space right. over one acre, it's, you would definitely require Which is why they have those nowadays. Yes, yes, over one acre triggers the Ohio EPA. Well, the other issue that we have is with Grassy Creek anyways, is a lot of that's on private property. If we try to mm -hmm. throw it into it, all it's going to do is is um, cause more issues within the Grassy exactly. Creek area. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I recall from our plan, um, from the Grassy Creek Master Plan, there was some conversations regarding um, uh, like a rain garden in the right, city of right of as an mm -hmm. option to, to try to have the water drain towards the right-of-way yeah. within there. Has there been any thoughts or processes on on that 
there haven't been any takers for uh, building a rain garden in their front yard, but our stormwater, Lauren Rush, our stormwater program technician has held a uh, rain barrel uh, workshops every year and gets good attendance at that. And um, I have a rain barrel at my house. And it, it, it holds, um, I think, 50 gallons, which, you know, doesn't seem like much, but it's, it's, um, it's a start. Did it fill up pretty quick after the rain this weekend? Well, actually, um, last weekend we took it out. Oh. We uh, emptied it because it's getting colder and yeah. we're not growing any new crops or any new uh, garden plants anymore. And Mr. Smithers, have you seen this report? Um, is there a way that we can send that? Do you have an email that we can send that to? Sure. What's your email, Mr. Smithers, if you don't mind? Or if you want to give it to me and write it down, I can email it over to you here. Okay. As I, I know it, it was, it's pretty in-depth and detailed. It actually takes pictures of the property. It shows multiple properties that had um, the flood issues. I know we had talked about this in the past. It's trying to find a cost-effective solution for it. Um, with yeah, one of the, the big primary focuses right now is trying to eliminate our combined sewer overflows as well. Uh, those are things that cost the city money in order to have a permit. We are charged for each of those overflows. And we're continuing to try to eliminate that. And it, a lot of it comes from that same area. Mm -hmm. um, I, I really do, I'm not sure why the sewer system wasn't put in initially in, the, in this area. I, I mean, who knows? I, mean, I don't think any of us were uh, really here when, when those, many of those properties were probably first put in. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you oh, wait so at Mark I was back there. a little kid. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Alice, remind me what we did along, I believe it was Pine Street, across from Frank's school. Did we not, what did we... Uh, On Sycamore, um, Sycamore Sy to Pine Street and north on Pine Street for some number of feet, we put in a storm sewer there. And as part of um, the a water replacement project in that area. Um, can't remember how many uh, feet, but Sycamore flooded in the street. Sycamore flooded terribly before that. So that was to address street flooding. And, and how did we take care of that water? I mean, it, it, had, it had to attach to the storm no, um, north on Pine. Yes, it discharged so north on Pine. There was capacity for that already. Yes. I don't, um, I don't believe it traveled all the way to Grassy Creek. I think that, if I remember correctly, there was already a stub of, of storm sewer south of Grassy Creek and we connected to that. Because they did a lot of work on Pine with that. I seem to remember when they dug the road up. Yes, and that was also a water replacement yeah. project too. Yeah. Yeah. Is there any thoughts about installing any catch basins in the right of way as a possibility to allow the neighbors to connect to yeah. not in the area he's talking about because this is where he lives and all these red ones are the catch basins but there's a big gap in the area it's well even in the front yards there's nothing. this is where he's right here yeah so. That could be looked at. There would be some concern about overloading Grassy Creek, but that could be looked at. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We have to send it somewhere. Yeah, and it does have to go somewhere, but uh, even if it's something that might be able to hold it, to slowly release it, if at least eliminate some of the, if, they, if the residents want to tie into it, it's a way to make it get out a little more quickly. Maybe it takes a couple of days versus a full week. Mr. Smithers has something else. We have, uh, as a neighborhood, we look at it too. What would we think would be good? You talk of a catch basin. If, if we, in fact, had a pit of some sort that was reinforced at a sump pump, it would be very easy to run a line right straight to the storm sewer on South Boundary. We're not that far on our particular site. One further down from us could be also put in if it only meant sump pumping it to the one we're on. 
and then back out into the street, it would take the excess water over the days. That's all it works. Again, the water's not a problem. It never goes anywhere. It just sits there and you can't get in your yard. So to me, that would be, you're talking a hole here and a hole down further, or I, you may have to do one more before you get to creek. I don't know that. But I mean, that would be an excess way of doing it. We're talking about a sump pump, which isn't a major expense item, whether it was manual or whether it was just a matter of a float on it. It would be something to take that water off because, you know, again, it's been, well, see, I've only been here 55 years. The property's been here forever. And again, it's like, when is something going to happen? Uh, I've, I know it's it's not helpful now, but we have done, we have actually done quite a bit of research on that. I'll, I'll definitely share that over to you, maybe something and, to and, look at. And again, with the concern we had, today, yeah. and again, we're looking tomorrow, what, another two inches, and I'll tell you what, two inches doesn't sound like a lot of rain. Yeah, it's going to be almost another four or five days before we get back in our yard. I, I live on the other side of West South Boundary, and I know that um, when we have a lot of rain uh, towards the back of my backyard, can't even mow back there. The portion of it gets a little too soggy itself, but we have I, nothing like what you have. I can my, tell you yard, my yard, I, if you mow my lawn, your teeth would shed. It's so rugged because it's going across it when it's soft and it's like, you know, and it's then it dries and it's just like, it's like a water. And so it, it does become difficult. Again, not a complaint so much as it's a is there something in the works? We would like to know. But it, it does sound like that there is a, a plan about four years and 2024. Is that what I heard of trying to find some solution stores? So it, there is a, a slow process to get there. I know we would all love to do it immediately, but $11 million is, would be a lot to try to, to do that immediately. And, and the problem with doing it immediately is you might create a, another problem by solving this. Potentially. And no, it's yeah, just, there's. Definitely. There's definitely the, uh, I would love to have you look, review this um, study that was done and get your feedback on this. Some news, by the way, Fayette, for instance, the mm -hmm. grant they got from the state yesterday, Governor DeWine really did a nice job for them. It's like, going, isn't there something? Who? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wasn't that Fayette? Yeah, Fayette. What was the amount? Do you remember? Uh, I think there were 50, 54 grants issued yesterday. Yeah, so there was, uh, they, they did something because of their water system. Uh, but again, this is the natural thing. It's been there for a long time. So. Yeah, but I, funny? I, don't know. I think the, the grant for that was uh, for their actual delivering of the water, not taking it away. You correct me. I, I uh, actually don't remember the specifics, specifics of that, but that grant program is geared toward water and wastewater. Thank you so much for your time. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Would you like your picture back, Mr. Snowden? Uh, please, thanks. Back. Thank you. All right. Any other citizen concerns? All right. Uh, next item on the agenda is our water rate, uh, a water and sewer rate study. And I believe we have uh, Mr. Macker here uh, for that as well. Can you hear us? Yes. Sorry, I'm hearing we can hear you too, so everything's going smoothly this time. <laughs> so thank you. Uh, we'll let you kick it off, and uh, we got a copy of your uh, presentation. And uh, do you need the ability to share? Or? Uh, yes. Let's see. 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 let can you see my screen? Yes, yes. we can. Okay, great. So, thanks again for having me. Um, the presentation this evening is going to be fairly similar to the last one, so I'll, I'll go fairly quickly through slides you've already seen. Um, any changes I've made, I'll, I'll make sure to hide. So tonight, the table of contents is just the study assumptions. Uh, the revenue requirements are just the cost of the system, the revenue required to be collected from customers. Uh, we'll look at the fund balances for water and sewer, uh, your current charges and rates, our recommended charges and rates over the next five years, a uh, comparison of some residential customers, and then a comparison to surrounding utilities, and then finally our recommendations. 
Uh, so some guiding principles and objectives, the water and sewer system must each be financially self-supporting. We should maintain reserves for contingencies and day funds and of that nature. Uh, and the goal is to keep rates and charges uh, low over time. You'll see that italicized over time because you can defer maintenance and not invest in your system now and have really low rates. But if at some point you're going to have um, you know, an infrastructure disaster, you have to raise rates a lot. So we want to make sure we keep them low over time. So our objective is to ensure rates are stable through sound financial management, and we do that by reviewing the funds, as well as your long-term plan, including your CIP. So some factors that affect charging rates, um, and here's one of the changes I made. So operating maintenance expenses, uh, before we were just projecting all expenses by roughly an inflationary 3%, uh, but we've actually tied your purchase of water that you purchased from Toledo uh, to the contract rate increases that they have in their contract. Um, so those are higher than a 3%, so we're going to see uh, the water rates go up slightly than the last time I showed you, about a 1% increase for the first two years, and I'll show you that. Uh, capital improvement plans, obviously investments in distribution, your collection, your treatment systems on the wastewater side, uh, any debt service, that's both existing debt service you're paying off now, as well as any future debt service that would come about from your capital projects. Uh, customer changes, we're looking at a 1% growth uh, in customers year over year. Uh, based on the recent historical trends. And then on water usage and sewage generation, we're actually looking at no growth. So while you may be seeing an increase in customers, uh, those customers on per capita or on average are actually using less water um, per year. Uh, miscellaneous revenues, we're just being conservative here, saying no growth in miscellaneous revenues. That's things that offset your water and sewer charges. And then we have two uh, cash balances, each for water and sewer. So you have an operating balance, we're recommending 90 days of operating expenses there, so roughly 25% of the operating expenses, um, achieving that over the, the next five years. And on the capital side, roughly one year of average capital costs uh, being held in capital fund. So what is the revenue requirement? As I mentioned before, it's simply the revenue required to collect it from customers. Uh, so it's really just your expenses. So at the bottom, we have your O&M expenses, that's in blue. That's things like salaries, benefits, supplies, um, outstanding debt, so any uh, debt payments you're paying right now, and then capital improvement projects. And you can either fund those through cash, directly through rates, you can fund them through debt, and you can then project, project the actual debt for that, or you can take them from reserves. So you add all those costs up, and that's your annual revenue requirement. You less out any miscellaneous revenues, and that's your net revenue requirement. Uh, so this is a snapshot of your capital projects by funding source for water and sewer. So you can see for water over the next five years, uh, we're anticipating collecting all of that through rates or through um, customer revenues. While on sewer, we're collecting from rates as well as through that capital fund. So I mentioned that, that capital fund that uh, we're, we're trying to maintain, you know, one years of capital. Uh, so you can see that that capital fund is, is higher than the one year. So we're actually helping customers by using some of that reserve and drawing down those funds so we don't have to raise rates uh, so much for water. And then there's some lists of some large water and sewer projects. And I understand Alice might have given you more detail on this. You can feel free to ask questions if we go or if you want to wait for the end. Uh, so these colored bars, these colored columns are the revenue requirements. Again, that blue is your operating expenses. Uh, you'll see it uh, not increasing quite by 3% because this is also tied to the water purchases from Toledo. Uh, the green is your cash funding capital projects. And then the orange is the capital fund contribution. So for water, the capital fund uh, was not quite adequate. It wasn't at the the, uh, the one year average of CIP. So we have these $500,000 um, contributions in 22, 23, and 24 to get that fund to where it needs to be for water. And the other note you'll notice in the last time the presentation said this reflected a 7% increase in revenue in 22 and 23. Uh, now that we're tying the water purchases to the Tulio contract, it's an 8% increase in 22 and 23. So a 1% increase from, uh, from the last presentation. And then still 3% for the other three years. Uh, sewer, no changes to the, the last time we showed this, this slide. Uh, blue is your operating expenses. Um, red is your current debt service. So water, we don't have any current debt service, and sewer we do, so that's principal and interest payments you're currently paying. And then green is your cash money capital projects. 
Uh, no requirement here to contribute to a capital reserve because that reserve is already adequate. Uh, and we're actually using some of that to pay down some of the capital. And then, as I didn't mention before, that, that light blue line going across is what you're bringing in revenue now. And then the darker blue line sloping um, to the right, that is proposed revenue. And so this proposed revenue line reflects a 2% increase in the next five months. Now this is a snapshot of your operating fund balances for water and sewer. And this is including the proposed revenue. So the 8% the for two years for water and then 3%, and then for sewer, the 2% each year. Um, so you can see the blue is what your, uh, what the balance is, and the red is what the target is. So you can see since the blue is underneath the red in the top chart, uh, you have not met that target, but the goal is to meet that target by the end of the fifth year. And then sewer, you can see uh, you meet that target and you exceed it in 23, 24. And so as we use some of that cash to pay for projects, um, it becomes closer to that target line. And then we have the capital fund balance. Um, and this is the one we're trying to get to uh, build up to an average year's worth of capital. So I put them both on the same scale. That's why you see the water amounts a lot lower. But you can see that blue building up slightly. There's the $500,000 increases in 22, 23, 24. And then on sewer, you can see that use of that cash balance um, as it drops. Uh, this, is, this is similar to the, um, <coughs> the cash balances. This is in table format as opposed to graphical. So this shows the starting balance. Um, any revenue increases, any expense decreases or contributions, and then the ending balance for each of the operating and capital funds. So this table represents uh, water. You can see the operating fund balance starting in 22. As we add any rate revenue, miscellaneous revenue, less out expenses, uh, less out from the operating balance, a transfer to the capital fund, and then the resulting um, transfer in to the capital fund. Same thing on the capital side, starting balance, contribution to the fund, um, no current from the debt expenses for the water side, blessing out capital expenses, contributions, and then ending balance. So you can see at the end of 2026 on the capital side, that 3.01 million, uh, that's roughly the average we were trying to get to for the water CIP. Same thing on the sewer. Uh, you can see the operating fund balance uh, starting roughly 600,000, adding in the revenues, subtracting expenses to your ending balance. And then on capital, you can see that ending balance there about 18 million for 2022. And you can see how we're, we're using that as we pay down uh, some of the CIP to get that balance to a more reasonable number. So your current charges, this will be your 2021. You have a minimum monthly charge that includes 300 cubic feet. And you have both an inside city and outside city charge. So regardless of how much water you use to pay the the monthly minimum charge, which includes 300. And then you have a volume charge for any usage over 300 cubic feet, and that's charged for 1,000 cubic feet. Uh, same thing on sewer, but here you have some customers with one meter, some customers with two meter, and they pay slightly different charges. And so then taking that rate design and projecting it over the next five years, uh, using those projected revenue increases, these will be the resulting uh, rates for the next five years. Uh, this is a comparison of some typical residential customer bills. We have a small residential customer who uses exactly at the, the monthly minimum, the 300 cubic feet. You've got your median customer, so someone who uses uh, the 50 percentile, so that's half your customers use less than 500, half use above 500, and then a large user will be about 800 cubic feet. Uh, if we just look at that median user and in, in bold italicized there on the second row, uh, the increase each year, you can see it's about of $3.40 in 2022, $3.60, and then roughly $2 each year after that, uh, which equates to about a 5% increase um, each 2022-2023, and then roughly 2.5% increase. Um, and that's a combined water and sewer. And then sticking with that median user, comparing that customer to other utilities around the area. So we can see the dark blue and dark green is a water and sewer bill for Perrysburg, you can see in 2021, that total being 67.85, right in the middle there. And then about two bars above that would be the 2022 bill, 
that's 71 and 23. Um, one caveat is we don't know what these other utilities increases are going to look like for 2022. So this, this chart only reflects any recent increases we're able to find or, or recent rates. So if any of them are going to be increases, uh, that's not reflected. So our recommendations are adopt the recommended charges and rates uh, for the planning period from 2022 to 2026. Uh, and then review rates and charges on an annual basis. You don't need to do a study like this you know, every year, maybe every four to five years. Um, you can really have your staff go in and do the, do the rate update each year, take the budgeted numbers, replace them with actual, kind of see where you stand and make adjustments. With that, any questions? I do have a, a couple questions. So just to confirm that the initial, the, one, the first one we, uh, presentation we had last month did not include the Toledo rate increases. Yeah, so what we were doing, we took the latest budget number from Toledo and we were just increasing it by inflation. So this one's a little more accurate where it's actually tying into the, um, the contract in terms of what they're predicting increases to be for Perry Okay. And then, you know, this is just kind of a hypothetical question. I'm sure you probably didn't look at this. I know the city of Perrysburg does have a minimum usage threshold, uh, which is in that smaller user. Uh, this might be more of a question for the administration. If we were to look at uh, reducing that minimum charge, and just charging charging residents for what they use, uh, what is the amount of client of um, residents that are at that minimum usage right now? And if we were to change that, how would that change the figures? Uh, so the first part of your question, I can I can find that out. I'd have to look on the okay. Them all. But yeah, the second part, there's a couple of things. So if you if you were to lower how much is included in the minimum from 300 to say 200, but if you didn't actually lower the charge, then you know customers who just pay the minimum, their bills would go up. Right? And so they still need to buy 300, but now they're only getting 200. They have to pay for that additional 100. Now, if you also lower the charge at the same time as lowering the minimum, you'd be getting less guaranteed revenue. So a lot of utilities we're seeing, they're seeing declining usage. Um, so they're actually trying to increase how much money they get from fixed revenues. And a lot of your expenses are fixed other than you know, electricity, chemicals, things like that. So you would actually you know, be getting less guaranteed revenue if you could not help the finance. So um, there's different ways you could do it, but that would be an impact. And how many, you know, you said they had some numbers there. How many residents are actually paying uh, who are below that minimum threshold? It's just that. Yeah, it's, go ahead. I'm sorry. The only, the only thing I have on this presentation is just showing you that okay. 300 is about 25th percentile, so about probably 25 percent of your usage is roughly up below that 300. So that's a rough proxy, but I could I could get into the financial model and give you an answer. You could almost say, put it you that. That group, the higher end of that 25, the uh, higher end of the small users are actually subsidizing the lower end, the, the lesser amount users in some ways. I'm sorry, Claudia. I think you got the other way. Yes, I did. Because the people who use less than 300 still pay the 300. Are subsidizing the people who are right at 300. They're they're offsetting each other, so that would be a reduction in, in uh, revenue, as if we did it that way. So I'm trying. Anyways, I should. I was just thinking out loud. I'm sorry. And then that revenue loss has to be made up. Exactly. That's what I was trying to get at. Yeah. I mean, they within that small group, they kind of like offset each other within the group. Or else, if we go to pay per usage under a certain amount, we would end up having an offset. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. And if you um, look at this this chart, you'll see the small user twenty fifth percentile. That's a good break point for the minimum charge. Um, and it indicate well, it's it's a good break point. My other question. Yes. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I say, yeah, it just so happens to be that your current breakpoint for the minimum 
it was right around the 25th percentile. So I'll give you credit if you meant to do it that way, but that's the way it worked out. I happen to know I'm one of them, so. Mm -hmm. uh, also, and, and I think I asked this earlier last time, and I'm not sure, I don't remember the answer. We're constant, we just, we're constantly having new developments come online and stuff. As we get new cu customers, shouldn't that like drive prices down a little bit? Because you have more, you're spreading the bill out among a wider, uh, you will have some inherent costs, but overall you'll have more customers paying into the system, so you'd think it should go down overall. For right, that's, that is true. Um, we can't be certain of how much future growth is going to happen and when it's going to happen. So this is a conservative position to take okay. with not counting on um, growth in consumption. And then if that uh, consumption growth happens, then it's, uh, um, it's to our benefit. Yeah, and, and the 1% increase in customer growth that we showed in the something slide, that is helping keep these increases where they are. If we took away that 1%, these would have to go up slightly. So it is helping with that. Um, and again, on the usage side though, we did look at the history and it, it's showing that you're really not increasing much in usage. And again, that goes back to you know, smaller household sizes, um, energy efficient appliances, you know, low flow fixtures, things like that. Yeah, so, I was just thinking about that with the, all the water conservatory, conserving, Equipment, whatever. Yeah. Low flow. Sorry. Go ahead. I apologize. Um, go ahead. Michael, I have two questions for, on page five. What, what is causing the spike in revenue for the operating fund balances on the, on the sewer side in year 23, 24? Is this the slide you're referring to? Um, I think that, no, it is not. That would be the one after that. Y yes, just the sewer. What is causing that operating fund to grow so rapidly in year 23 and 24? Yes, yeah, so this would be where, I suppose, if you look at the, back, the past one, you can see what, 23. So you see where that line is much higher than the colored bar in 23. So that's essentially a surplus in revenue anytime the line is higher than the colored bar. So you take that surplus and you're really tacking it onto your cash balance. Um, so we, we looked at the whole entire period over five years holistically, so we didn't go one year by, you know, we didn't, so we don't increase rates one year, then decrease them another year. Then right. It, it's, just, look at, it's just in that one year we see a significant bump. And yeah, and then we do use that for future years. So that's why you so, see in 23 there's a surplus. 24, you're roughly right where you need to be. 25 is actually a slight deficit, and 26 is a slight deficit. So you're using that surplus in 23 to pay down those deficits in 25 and 26. So that's why here you see the bump up and then it comes back down. But, but if we're just asking for a 2% bump, we're, we're experiencing just about a $1.5 million increase in operating funds. And I'm just trying to understand, I mean, I understand how eventually it's going to level out. Um, where are we getting that from a 2% increase? So I, I guess this gap, I don't know if you see my mouse, this gap here, what this number is roughly 8 million or so, and down here is only about 6.5. So that right there is a $1.5 million surplus. So that right there is a, it's because your capital plan, capital projects are lumpy in nature. It's not a consistent inflationary you know, CIP. Right. You had a little bit of capital here, a big jump in capital here, a small one here, and then some big ones. So it's really, everything else is pretty fairly smoothly increasing. You see the operating expenses, the debt service is stagnant. But it's the capital plan that's really lumpy. So here, when you have this big drop in capital in 23, based on the capital plan, you end up with a big surplus. And so that surplus then reflects into the cash fund. Well, and that was going to be my follow-up, because again, on page five, on the capital side, how we're sitting at 20 million in the fund, um, and then, of course, we're going to start utilizing it over time. Did, was that just great planning to have accumulated that kind of a fund? Sure. Yeah, thank your, uh, your staff on that, I suppose. Um, 
I think, I mean, if you didn't want to use the reserve, you said, well, I want to, you know, you're very fiscally conservative, I want to keep all those reserves, it would have to be reflected in the rate increases and come out of customer rates. So I think it's prudent to use some of that balance and um, to save the customers the rate increases. I'm just surprised that the fund is so big. Um, I, great job, administration. Sorry. That will level it out over time. That's how we can do it 2%. So, understood. Yeah, that's great. If you can do inflation increases, you know, 2 to 3% per year, we would definitely recommend that, as opposed to waiting 10 years and having to do it 20% or something. Mr. Chairman, if I could just add one thing. Uh, in the sewer fund, there have been planned projects that haven't happened yet, so that's part of the um, way that the fund balance increased. But those will come down, as we said, over time. It, it was just an observation, yeah. not a criticism. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, that's, that's a significant yeah. fund. Yeah. So we got nothing. Anybody else with any questions? Mm -hmm. I just got to make sure that uh, my wife can take up the kids real quick. So, um, if there's no other questions, we will actually move on to the next item in the agenda, and that is going to be the award of the water tower for the Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Michael. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for stopping. So I will hand this over to the administration to talk about the water tower. As you are aware, we need to have our state route I-99, or state route 199, sorry, elevated water tower tank painted. We did go out for bids for this earlier this year, a short time ago, and we got nine bids. The estimate from the design engineer for this project was 800,000. All nine bids came in under that estimate. Two of the bids came in under 500,000. The lowest and best bidder is Seven Brothers Painting Inc. at 438,725. We have called their um, references just to double check because these numbers are so much lower than the uh, design engineers all wonderful references. They are listed among, when references were called, who are the best, they were listed among two or three people that other places have used and really respected. So we are asking for you to approve this agreement with Seven Brothers Painting Inc. for 438725 with a 10% contingency in it, um, in case we have issues which happen. When we put these up for bid, do we specify, because it's kind of general here, um, we probably put exactly what we want done. Yes. When it comes to cleaning or repairs and stuff. Uh, and we probably specify the exact materials. We don't tell them where to, who to use, like say Joe's water paint, water tower paint company. But we do like to say it has to meet these standards. Okay. And they have to adhere to when they do the work. Because do we have inspectors on these jobs? For some we will, yes. We were thinking of nominating you. Ah! <laughs> I'm afraid of you. Me too. So if I may ask, uh, what's going to be the uh, final design look on the, on the water tower? I don't know that that's been determined yet, but I got to pass along your comments to their manager. Okay. So if we don't know if it's been determined, how can we have the bid? Because it's just a lump sum. Yeah. Okay. The actual, um, I'll say mobile for lack of a better name. And this is, and, and this is maintenance. It's not for decorative reasons, right? Yes. It's, it has to be done. If you don't do this, bad things can happen. And we don't want those bad things to happen for failure to maintain our water towers. I, I agree 100 percent i'm just making it clear <laughs> on the record on the record this is being done so we don't have a water crisis in perrysburg from the water coming out of that tower for lack of maintenance 
Thank you. Yeah. It's not. Do we, do we know what color this is? I can't seem to find the color. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a blue similar to our face mask, not our face mask. Okay. So, so whatever we decide to do decoratively will be done separately. So we'll back up the second time. Is part of this bid that there is a lump sum dollar amount of, I want to say, 35000 if I'm not mistaken. And according to the specs, that that is at our discretion. What it will be. But then we have to go back up a second time because we're going to pay the entire It has to dry first. Let it dry. Yeah. And then we have to go back up. So it does include the decorative side of them. Yes. It's a, a, an aesthetic piece. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm, if it doesn't stop writing, writing it, um, non-conformant and say that dollar. I, I'm sorry. Say that again. The city could actually choose non-conformant item, which would save us those dollars, and the water tower would just be done. If it doesn't stop raining, it's not going to matter because nobody's going <laughs> to get up there to paint this thing. It'll <laughs> start raining on its own. Do we do? Do we pay for railing weights on this? Yes. yes. This I'm was just, actually our first use of our new electronic bid system, and I thought it went remarkably well for our I'm first use. So just, we're very pleased. I'm just surprised how much under it is. That's very unusual, and that's why I keep asking these questions. <laughs> well, we, we had two that came in. I know. Well under, I, which is, and all mine came in under. I yeah. would have been concerned if it had been one standalone, but. Yeah. If it was one that was way under compared to everyone else, I would be very concerned. But that's um, not what happens. So. Yeah. And from my experience and my other hat that I wear, that is something that uh, I know that uh, some companies would be very concerned on. Um, I don't have too much. I'm doing some uh, research here and just kind of looking them up too. I, I read through everything before we got it and um, just trying to look up any information. Hearing what we're, we're seeing, I see that they get the bond there. At the insurance, everything seems to be in place. I don't have a reason to say not to go forward with it. Do we have? Do we um, require them to submit a schedule too when they? Okay. So I, I have no objection. I would like I to, yeah. if you could share with the mayor. I'm curious as what the aesthetic look will be. I have just seven or ten. No rush on that. I, I have no problem with sending it on either because it's a good deal. I don't either. I just kind of reiterate that I believe that council should have some input on what is going up on, on that uh, water tower. Um, so I guess this is going to be a 3 0 recommendation yes. to council as a whole. All right. Uh, next item is going to be the sewer credits tabulation. Oh, we, we still got a lot to go yet. I know, I've got it though. You thought you were the chairman. Um, you have the printout in the front of you. Uh, three issues this time for the month $1,247 and year to date total $5,503. Broken spigot, some pump, and another broken spigot. And the child a second appeal that was uh, they had an appeal previous month, but they but the issue continued and, they, and then and I if if you recall I previewed that there may be another one and this is the other one. Yeah. Right. Thank you, Alice. Okay. And uh, next one is going to be a uh, another fun one here going over the budget. I forgot about that one. You want to start off? You can start off. Okay. And just curious to see if we have a breakdown like we received in service. Alice looks like a deer caught in the headlights. No, we, we had a breakdown like this that was given to us for service that had everything. Yes, that's in here. The, okay, last, the last few pages. So um, uh, I'll leave it to you whether you want to go through the, the uh, what I call the fine print or go walk through the the one that has a detail. Did you hand that over to us or a, a copy or my? Oh, I didn't. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. I, I just didn't I know if you, you brought a copy for everybody. No, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I never no, it's okay. Those. Did you email it to us? 
It's the same thing that happened last night for fire and um, yeah, Okay. It'd just be nice to have them instead of trying to pull up and make sure we're open up the right attachments. And <laughs> but uh, you get, I know I have the budget as a whole up. Yeah, I have. I think there's a budget, so, but it's so small. Oh, there was a question I meant to ask for the last one. Well, I, I moved to you uh, while you're looking for that question. I will tell you up front. We projected eight million dollars of revenue prior to the findings of the rate study, and the rate study says seven point eight eight million. So um, that that's why he expressed confidence in your department's ability to come up with those numbers we do our best um, so it, it, it's, i know that we're going to probably go through this but i wanted to uh just bring up the fort makes road uh, the ditch work as okay. well as the uh, multi-use path yeah on there um when i was looking through the letter this is where the where the question came from so it's fitting for this committee is that the multi-use path shows that it's going from Echo Junction Road to Sun Place and ending there. And I, and this is more of a question for the administration than just mm -hmm. yourself at yeah. this point, is I, I know we had that initial conversation and when we had the consultant here, uh, the suggestion was going further than just that. And I wanna make certain that if we're gonna do Sun Place that we take it all the way down. Was the scope of the um, RFQ that is actually, I'm actually putting my council updates together. So the firm that you're looking to select is called GDP, and um, we're actually having a scoping meeting with them um, uh, November 1st. But I believe what went out for the consulting services, the design consulting services, was for Capital Junction, and I thought two sudden place with the parameters of um, Study and that that is the primary from the original study uh, I know that we had a conversation of on the committee level I, I believe uh, and I think this was even talking service of taking that and continuing it on to try to get that final connection so we have well, talked I, about copying the roads thank to you the other side of the road. Um, but I, I think that we can have those conversations during the scoping meeting because they could uh, they could give us a proposal, pricing proposal, based on a couple of, adding a couple of different alternates. So okay. it's not going out to visit this one, we're actually designing. That is something that we can ask them to give us a price on and that we can bring it to council for um, approval as we will the original contract. Okay. So and we're, they, we're talking just the multi-use bed. Just the multi-use bed. And then the other question I was going to ask on that is I know we have the consultant here from Bergman that they had mentioned a, a multiple grant opportunities that can help offset the cost. Have we been applying for those grants or working on trying to get those? At this point, we have not, only because if we want to go that route, but that's going to push this project out several years. So what we have budgeted in the 2022 budget, uh, both general fund portion as well as utilities portion, is to do this project next year. Okay. Because CMOCOG funding is out, I think it's 2026 right now and beyond. Uh, we could try and apply for some other grants, but that will slow down the process. Because uh, as Alice applied for grants a um, month or so ago, mm -hmm. and we've still not heard back on those, and that's going to be the same for any grant we apply for. So I thought, we, can, uh, we can go Bergman. slow or we can go fast. I, I do appreciate that. I would like this to try to move as quickly as possible. Um, but I was under the impression that Bergman mentioned a few other different grant locations and opportunities that may be. There are other opportunities like rails to trails and solar OER funds, but those are a long process and they come with a lot of stipulations. Okay. And again, the, the art dollars we plot for today that are typically available next year, it's going to be funding cycles out. It, if we uh, move forward just to the Sutton Place, it may be uh, appropriate to start doing the grant applications for those connection pieces now. Certainly, and that's something that this consulting firm, if they're ultimately the firm that's selected that we bring before you, they, they would also have knowledge of all those other funding mechanisms as well. 
Okay. Because of the, the ice tea act, there is a certain percentage of transportation dollars that have to go to multi use paths. Mm -hmm. And if they don't use it all, it might be an opportunity mm -hmm. to get something out. Yeah. Maybe it doesn't hurt to throw them in there and just see if they give it to it afterwards. I don't know if that would ever happen, but. We apply for most of those grants we apply for, we cannot spend hours prior to being awarded or go down and put the papers. Yeah. Unfortunately. Figured why, why not hurt, wouldn't hurt to ask for that. No, because and Brian is aware of um, possibly as well, but they all just come with different strings that are attached at different timelines. Mr. Chairman, as much as I like that idea of continuing that, yeah. I would hate to think that holding off for Sutton Place yeah. and Beyond would delay this project. I, I don't disagree yes. with you. I just all. want to make, yeah. Yeah. And, and maybe I should clarify is when I was talking about applying for some of the other grants is continuing the path after Sutton Place. Finish. Yes. Right. So that way we can start getting that ball rolling. At the same. Okay. Which, same token. Yeah. Which is a good idea. Instead of waiting, let's just right. get moving on it. Exactly. Okay. Nah, I'm sorry to go on a no, somewhat tangent. So. No problem. So, Alice, I'll let you start uh, on where you want to start off on this. Okay. Well, if if you are amenable, um, why don't we go to the detail, which is uh, larger font and easier to read, and it's got the detail embedded in it. I like that a little better. Yes. And um, so we've got employees, summer help, uh, vehicle maintenance, those are the mechanics. We pay 10% of the mechanics cost at public service. Um, purchase of water. This one, that number, that 5210, should be 4146 uh, 000, 000 to match. Uh, that was revised after this was printed. So that 4146 000, uh, 000, 000 that's on the front page of this packet is the right number. Um, next is water expense that's entirely for lab testing of water samples. Uh, contract labor, that's for some part-time people. Um, and insurance building a vehicle. Office equipment, just minor expenses there. Building repairs, we've got some painting of buildings, uh, a floor replacement in a um, booster pump station and some site grading around an existing building. In machinery, pipe, and contract services, we've got uh, rental, service calls, uh, contracted emergency repairs, and other related work. Then uh, fuel lights and telephone, we've got cable, electric, and natural gas broken out. Communication and technical services, we've got all those contract, contracted items uh, broken out. Uh, uh, mobile phones, uh, our software, billing software annual fee, and uh, fees for AMI, which is the uh, fixed base metering system. Um, so that's going to be the, with the tower installed and the fees in order to monitor that? That is for the licensing fee for the receivers that are going to be on antenna at the top of a water tower or other city facilities, yes. Um, and then uh, contract services, uh, with water flow monitoring program, it's something new uh, we're putting in for 15,000 and that wraps up total contractual services and then in uh, supplies, uh, no real big dollar items, but parts and supplies and, and small equipment. And then stationary postage, what you believe or what you'd expect to see there. Uh, vehicle fuel, um, uh, minimal, well, rather small amounts for membership and travel for those um, conferences that are um, that are necessary. EPA license fee, fourteen thousand. And then some others, by, by breaking down in this way and showing this detail, we've minimized the type of items that go into an other expense or a miscellaneous line item so that now that's down to $11,000 for next year. And then vehicle maintenance, auto parts, and uh, related, then in materials and supplies, um, 
then uh, small amount furniture and fixtures, uh, small amount in um, electronic uh, data processing purchases, and then in equipment. We've got a trailer mounted easement cleaner um, that is used in um, accessing, making repairs in e tight easement areas. So this is a smaller machine that can get in where um, larger construction equipment can't, can't access. And uh, building mounted air compressors, controls, um, new um, operating controls at both uh, booster pump stations and making a conversion at the south boundary pump station to pneumatic operation, uh, flow meters at that south boundary station, valve operators that will be used in the water distribution system, utility locators, leak detectors, and 50% uh, pickup truck uh, shared with uh, water and sewer fund, and then again uh, forklift and zero turn motors shared across water and sewer fund. And then um, employee uh, personnel benefits. And then transfer to, then the top of the next page, transfer to 402 funds. And that right now is set at 2.1 million. And that brings total expenses, which this 9.371 is not going to match. That is 8.298. Other page. Eight two nine eight six thirty. Okay. Um, and if if you're all in agreement, I'll just move into uh, sewer operating fund uh, employees, summer help, uh, vehicle maintenance. Again, paying half on, uh, half of ten percent on the uh, public service mechanics. Uh, biosolids management, that is a, a higher dollar amount than previous years because we've programmed in for cleaning digesters and then contracted labor um, and same insurance and small dollar amounts in office equipment maintenance. Then in building repairs, we've got some um, the wastewater fund share of painting uh, exterior buildings. Then equipment repairs, laboratory sample testing, equipment calibrations and telemetry and SCADA maintenance for 31,800. And then again, cable electric natural gas costs. And electric, of course, is higher here for because it's covering the wastewater treatment plant. Then uh, communication and tech services, the various uh, Verizon and BSNA software, those are split across water and sewer. NICO AM fee, AMI fees, um, that again is shared across the water fund. Mission Communications, that is, um, that's some telemetry with our um, wastewater lift stations. And we've got a storm track, that's a software program. And then contract services, the least flow, least flow meters on the CSOs, that's a continuing expense. Uh, uh, contracted emergency repairs, root control. We do do that annually, go out and shoot uh, shoot trouble spots with this um, phone <coughs> to knock down roofs. And then um, we've got some uh, CCTV, that is sewer camera work that we're looking at next year. And then in supplies, uh, nothing too outstanding there. Stationary again, same type of expenses. Uh, membership and travel, we've got a little bit more on the wastewater fund. Um, because there's uh, uh, licensed operators that need to get their uh, continuing education. Uh, we've got lab operations, we've got the ditch maintenance item, uh, sewer maintenance, uh, landscaping supplies, small equipment, other expenses, they have high EPA fee, and uh, waste management, that's dumpsters at the um, wastewater plant. And then other materials here, these are chemicals for the wastewater treatment process. And now we'll jump down to equipment purchases. Brookhaven lift station replacement pumps, we've got that program for next year. Gorman View uh, lift stations, uh, two, 
two pumps up for replacement, a push camera that's used in the um, to TV the sewer system, uh, some switch gear to lift station, again, half the pickup truck, um, and we've got a sewer work truck uh, requested for next year. Um, that is, um, that will be outfitted for sewer work. We have a truck existing that's outfitted for water distribution. And so this, this um, will be, this is beneficial. It's middle of the night, you gotta go make a repair. Um, so that, that is a, a requested item for next year. Um, then employee benefits. We've got a transfer to the to 402 fund of five million, and um, and then transfers for debt service obligations, and then uh, items specific to the stormwater uh, program manager, and that brings us to 9.589 million. Let's see if that matches. Mm -hmm. impacted by that 
repair and more customers that are out of water during to make that repair. Or have to not be able to drink their water when you bring it back online. Right, so it's then be subject to boil advisory. Exactly. Yes. yes. Um, so Ohio EPA, I mean, it's a it's a common sense thing to do, but we haven't had uh, the ability to do that. Now we have to make make the ability to go out and uh, operate those valves and find the broken ones. So, so is this is there a timeline they're giving us? Is it a three year period, five year period? What's there? It's a five year period, and we're into it. So we're we're already going to be asking for some uh, forbearance when at our next um, inspection, our next uh, sanitary survey mm -hmm. that it's called. So this is kind of a new project for us then, when you have that in the capital budget, I'm assuming. Yes. Right? Uh, the equipment to make those, to test and operate those valves and then people staffing to do it. We've got that in the uh, employee request. What is the, I know there was, this has always been a hot topic on the committee, uh, but uh, the backflow devices, mm -hmm. you know, that was mentioned for this, what is the anticipation of the duties? What's the anticipation that uh, the Public Utilities Department is going to do with handling those devices moving forward? Um, the, the, um, the point that relates to additional staff is we need to go in and inspect the large uh, large users on an annual basis or close to annual basis and we haven't had um, staffing to do that um, that's the first step we have to do then get through that and then we will we'll have to answer the question of how to deal with um, those that are not those, yeah, those are, that are not in compliance so is this person going to also do I know that uh, currently right now the backflow devices, the, the business owners are required to pay for those inspections. Is that just having it in-house or is it accepting a plumber's report as an inspection, is it, if, you, if that makes sense? Well, the, um, the annual testing of devices that are in place, that's still the property owner or the water user's responsibility and they hire, we send out letters in the fall, tell them you're your testing is due in whatever month, and they go out and get a plumber who's certified in backflow testing and do that test and send it in. So for the people who are in compliance, they're still doing that every year. The people who are not in compliance and don't have a, um, a backflow device, though that will uh, deal with after we get through a round of mandatory inspections. So, but I think the question had to do with mandatory inspection. Mm -hmm. The city wouldn't be doing those if they're being done by a plumber. Would they? Well, we're, yeah, we're we class so, yeah, yeah. There's two parts. Yeah. Each property owner is required to have uh, a certified person do the actual testing of that device annually. The city's responsible to make sure that that testing is happening by the property owner turning in that certificate to us. But we don't have the manpower, first of all, to go out and okay, I did, I, inventory what is actually in people's buildings. Because the inventory that we had that was done a couple of years ago was done by multiple different people. So we need, we need a group of people, a team of people who are dedicated to back and the rest. That, that's what they're doing day in and day out. Is they're either following up on the people that have not turned in their tango testing. Or they're going out and doing the inventory to say, yes, this person has an RPC, this person has a double check, this person doesn't have anything, this person just has a check box. We, we need that actual inventory, that's a good inventory, and then we need to create the, uh, the program, or actually you can put this off the shelf off software with this, that then you put all the property addresses, names in there, the devices in there, and locations of devices, then annually, if somebody is not turning in their annual inspection, then you can load into the system as well. We need people who are going out there and doing follow with the property. We just don't have the manpower to do that. Okay, thank you for the clarification. Yes, you're welcome. It's kind of like a two part. Understood. Let's 
So, and those people would be, I, I guess I said, split between the 331 and the 3321 would be um, both paid by water and then wastewater. So, those are the four personnel requests uh, in the utility commission for this year. And then, as if it is approved, have those people are on board, and that has the ability to have somebody truly oversee that the day to day in these operations, then we can assess how much of the work is getting done as required to get, to get done by the OEPA. And if they've added anything new, because it's a couple items that that has um, determined that aren't, really, that aren't required today, but it's in the work to soon be required that we do. And again, it, it's manpower issues, uh, not so much that we need to buy a truck or a piece of equipment. We need people out in the field, hands on, uh, to meet these, these requirements that they're putting down on us. So just for further clarification, this is for new employees. Yes. One is a supervisor who's going to go out and look at all the projects and make sure they're correctly. Is that sound about right? Am I? Well, oversee, oversee. oversee the day to day. Uh, so they'll be out in the field on a daily basis checking for project to project. And assigning, and assigning work. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, in the field issues. Yeah. And then we have three other individuals, uh, one for uh, assuming the bet. The, the backflow devices. And I'll, maybe Matt can speak to that. I, I just want to make sure that I understand I what each of the like duties are. Yeah. yeah, we wouldn't isolate a person to do, to do just one okay. thing. You know. So is there a, something that we can get that just kind of shows what the duties are of these employees? And yes. The yeah. the yes. Just that, Matt yeah. Yeah. that would be I, great. I'm kind of surprised that you have a water and sewer division without a supervisor. I mean, we don't have anything that's like a field operation. That's because we say many hats. Many hats. Well, mean, and, yeah. and that takes away. From, I can see. That's what I'm getting at. I don't know why you didn't have like a foreman or whatever you mm -hmm. want to call it who, who would report to Matt. That just yes. seems no brainer because you have a whole crew. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of people out in the field that Matt has. Right. Time out of the day. And not that he shouldn't have time to just see what's going on. And, and you and should. Higher level issues. Did you see 12? There's about 12. But there's 11 now. And there's a vacancy that we're trying to fill. We, I, have, we have three more. We have 15 people that are out in the field. Not all together in multiple different areas. And there's nobody who's dedicated solely to making those rounds and assisting on projects, answering questions in the field that need be. And making sure the work's being performed according to the standards and our specifications. And look that's that what Matt is trying to do while still doing projects um, for both water, sewer, assisting with wastewater, helping make the out the needed, answering questions there, and dealing with capital issues. It's the only department between service and utilities that does that to their design to to you. I mean, look at Rob. He has how many? He, he at least has Greg as a supervisor. Exactly, and you I'm know. sure he has a look, couple of lead workers, too. Uh, in, a, in a couple areas, yes. Yeah, exactly. Because you need that. Otherwise, I'm just surprised. Yeah. So we didn't know what we didn't know until Matt came on board and was really... That's in the like the that you have. We're set up for emergency repairs and water tests. That's what we're set That's That's surprising. And you can tell people off that. It took them off water tasks and dedicated to these other necessary efforts that we have to do. You would all get calls from the developers it's, all day long. It's the, only de it's the only department that does that. That's kind of like stupid. So we want to rectify that. I just look forward to getting that spreadsheet, just to give a better right clarification yes. of exactly the duties that are needed. Yeah, question about a flat goal, because it's not going to be a local goal. And I've made you look at some of the work and seasonal work. Yeah. But yeah, any questions? Yes. So that out and we'll get that to tomorrow. Thank you. So then the last two funds yeah. are the uh, capital for water yeah. and the capital for uh, just, yeah. and If you can find the detail on the last, it's the last three pages of the handout. On the water side, we've got a second phase of 5th and 6th Street Alley water line replacement. 
We've got, um, there's a project identified in the water master plan. It's a Levis Loop and Dixie Highway. That's a, a water replacement project. And we're, um, the consultants have suggested or advised that we do set asides every year for future tank uh, rehabilitation because that's going to happen. The, the uh, Fort Meigs tank and the Rocheton were put online in 2014-2015 so and they need to be looked at at a 10-year period so that's going to be coming up here uh, before we know it. Uh, oversized reimbursements that's for um, uh, cost recovery for development or developers putting in subdivisions and then AMI that's the fixed base phase two expenses. Then in engineering we've got design for the Levis Loop project designed for the second phase of 5th and 6th Street Alley replacement. Uh, engineering service during construction for those projects. And this, we've put this in. Um, it's, we will certainly keep, tra or, uh, keep an eye on, um, uh, and I don't want to say it that way, be open to uh, working with the city engineer if that opportunity uh, presents itself where his office can do some of that construction inspection and then um, we would, uh, uh, then that would cut some of that cost. And then an architectural study for um, shared across water and sewer capital funds for a campus plan. That got um, sidetracked last year during COVID, but we need to really put, bring that back up and um, come up with a campus plan for the public utilities uh, facilities. And lands, buildings, machinery, 100,000, that's placeholder, uh, pipe fitting and valves, that, um, that is uh, for just what it sounds in the system. And if uh, uh, broken valves are find, found, then those will be replaced out of that dollar amount. Meter replacements and so that brings us 2.3 million. And then in sewer, the capital side, uh, digester improvements. Um, this is a result of, this was identified in the, um, uh, the wastewater plant capital improvement planning uh, study. We've got Fort Meigs ditch rehab. That's, uh, that is what we estimate would be the uh, public utilities portion of the Fort Meigs ditch project. We've got dollars to build the Maple Street um, ERSSO, and then we've got a dollar amount for, um, there's a sanitary reroute on Louisiana South of Grassy Creek, and we've got the capital dollars in for that. And then engineering is a lot of, um, uh, to support the projects listed above, design the digester, construction phase for the digester, We've got um, primary clarifier design. That is um, a project that's identified in the wastewater plant um, master plan. And then construction phase engineering for the Maple Street work. And uh, third street sewer construction phase, Fort Meigs ditch design um, in construction engineering, some additional CSO modeling, and then the other half of the architectural study for the campus plan. And then in terms of equipment, we've got a crane truck and other equipment for a total of 200000 We've got miscellaneous wastewater plant improvements at 50000 We've got, again, 200000 for the sanitary sewer grant, the homeowner's grant. Um, we've got an oversizing placeholder of 200000 for developers upsizing um, sewers through a new subdivision. We've got dollar for bond payment brings us up to um, 5.055 million on in 402. So, just yes, a couple quick questions. Uh, the reroute for the sanitary sewer, is that something that's going to help with some of the CS, are these SSOs and CSOs? That is, that is an, an issue that's, it's, um, it's on the south side of Grassy Creek, so it's not in the, the old combined area, but it will, we found a trouble spot there, and that's something that we need to address. The, the sanitary needs to be rerouted around where it's going. 
is this something that's causing some issues where we're having some of these backups or it's it, not causing backups but it's it's not going where it needs to go so this okay. will be a correction okay all right and then i did see at the very last one said administrative expenses notes is that just for just payment of notes that were owed or it's just it's yes yes it's just a small um, amount so that yeah that, that's yeah for debt service it's associated with the debt service and the payment notes so there's a lot of documents that we have to file okay um, just more administrative expenses. Yeah, but with, and okay. And so I'm seeing notes of like 6,000. That's not a very big note. What are we yeah, having that still right. right. so. Okay. Um, the, the question I wanted to ask is with you being here, mm -hmm. is there anything that you would ask to put in the budget that um, you really wanted to see that isn't in the budget right now or anything that we should be made aware of? We weren't denied any requests we, i don't know i don't know really, i think you stick along line of wish lists right? oh is, no. is there something there that you're looking that you wanted to see in this year that just can't be done you know, you know we have a lot of just out of curiosity and um, i was going to ask about the upgrade of some of the equipment is, is it sufficient yeah. to for the what you get for experience with the use um well, we appreciate the three new pickup trucks that were um, approved for this year, and so that's a big help, and um, that went a long way to catch up. There's another couple of vehicles that are replacement vehicles. Yeah, they're in here. pieces of equipment yeah. that are in here, but I don't think there was anything that, the only thing I can remember modifying is, it was actually a project, which was the Levis Commons, and I think we took out a portion of it because I can't remember why, because something, it had one of the legs of it was not. I think a developer would be putting that in. Yes. And we yeah. didn't want to duplicate right. that. Yeah, because yeah, it was only an assumption that, that a developer is going to be developing on it. I do have a question that's not in the budget. I, meant, I thought about it and it like left my mind and I forgot to ask. Uh, the water tower painting. Did we put contingency funds in there? Does that have yes, that? yes, uh, ten percent. Yeah, I didn't see it in there. Did yeah, you? it's in the, the resolution. Okay, I think the heat Kate said it verbally. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's, in, it's, in a, it's spelled out in the resolution. Oh my gosh. So so just, just, a, just a couple questions. Mm -hmm. So the, the digest, are, there's two different funding sources, and and is it the same project? You got a 345 under capital and then I think 148. Yes, those, those are uh, emptying the digester and uh, is we would consider operation and maintenance. So that's in 332. Uh, moving and uh, moving the flare and adding um, a uh, safety walk around the roof of the digester and other. Um, replacements inside the digester building we're considering those capital because that will last longer than those improvements will last seven plus years or seven to 30 years so those we put into the capital site a couple more questions okay ever since the fort meg ditch thing has come about i've paid a lot more attention to ditches mm -hmm. and i think last year's budget was at one hundred twenty-five thousand, if i remember mm -hmm. right I, mm -hmm. These were moving fast enough I wasn't able to confirm. And this year it's 150. So do we actually have a ditch cleaning plan in place? Yes, and we have quotes for some uh, ditch maintenance work and some plans to do some ditch cleaning work in-house with our with our in-house staff. Yeah. Because, because I, I, I've been trying to find where we're doing our ditch work. Because there, yes. there's some ditches that are in pretty bad shape, mm -hmm. and that's and so I'm just as long as we have a plan. Yes. That's what I wanted yeah. To know. If I remember correctly, too, uh, Thompson, um, I believe the, the utility department is applying for some grants for some ditch work. Am I incorrect in that? Because I know that there was some stuff that came out to the yes. secretary. Yes, and we haven't come out to make that visit. Um, yes, um, there's a grant opportunity for. Um, Stream restoration 
at the south end of the cemetery. Mm -hmm. And and we, and we owe you a, a well, we owe the cemetery board a visit to walk through that process and and um, and, and go through that. Which is probably hopefully there's some other opportunities for some other grants with uh, some of the ditch work that needs mm -hmm. to be maintained yeah. on a regular basis yeah. here. And that's the key. It's main, uh, maintain on a regular basis. Theoretically, you start one foot side, clean all of them, and then you come back and start, do it again. Start over. I know the councilman probably have a few more questions. I just have one more. Okay. So last night there were two or three items listed under if the amended budget comes back as anticipated, they would be included. But I don't see anything for for your department. Is there's nothing, no, there's nothing that we, being held off for the amended? And okay. the reason that we held off um, that was on the general fund side to balance the general fund since those are all um, enterprise funds, just okay. not revenue funds. Okay. That that fund you say is within their within their fund. So we would um, not. There was, there was no projects that were asked for or no items asked for that did yeah. not get funded. So typically there would be nothing under the amended budget for her particular department. Uh, unless, unless a new project came up, that would be the only, or, or a piece, large piece of equipment broke between now and the end of the okay. year that wasn't budgeted okay. for. I, I, I just didn't know, because last night we found out there were, which is fine. I just didn't know if there were tonight, so okay. Nothing that needs so many funds at this okay. moment in time. Now, are there projects that are in the budget today, 2021? that may not get finished, that we got anticipated in this budget, possibly, and then during the amended budget process, we'll carry those projects over. Understood, okay. That's all I got. Any other questions on the budget? I, I have, uh, don't have a question on the budget, I have a question, this was a, I know a few of us have received some emails on this regarding uh, some of the sewer overflows, yeah. uh, concerned with growth, yeah. uh, and I forward you at least one or two of them. Um, it, from my understanding, can you, uh, I want to say from my understanding, uh, the wastewater treatment plant we have, mm -hmm. what is the capacity that that's running at with the? Eight million gallons per day dry weather capacity. And how much can it handle? Uh, 24 in wet weather. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. It, it, it's more than enough to, to handle the growth that is coming within the city. Well, the, the salient point there is we run 5.4, 5.5 dry weather flow average. Five, yeah, 5.4, 5.5. So that difference up to 8 million, which is 2.5 million gallons per day, that's our growth ability for new homes, new development. Okay. Uh, we're not seeing any changes. That also includes any flow that comes from the system. Yeah. That's what I was going to ask for clarification, just because it's in the township doesn't mean that we're not already taking it prior to annexation. Right. Correct. Correct. Yes, we have 1,200 customers up there. Exactly. Which in this case, the development we annexed, we were already taking their sewer and treating it. Right? So what development do we annex? What the one we just annexed. No, we didn't annex it. That was the plot that we approved. Yeah, that. Sorry. We were already taking there. Yes, sewer. yes, that, yeah. yes that, was in, that was inside the city by the time that that was built. Right. And, and the reason I want to ask is I know with the land use plan that uh, is still in draft, yeah. just to clarify, uh, that that whole area is what would be handled by the wastewater treatment plant. Is that correct in, in what I'm... Um, that plus, because that is a part of the two oil users, the Sanitary that goes outside of our yes. our boundaries. Mm -hmm. So our sanitary sewer service district is larger than the city of Paris. Yes, and that's really there's only so much that we can really. If there was a development that was going into the township, do we have any say or any comments that would happen? As of right now, under the current agreement, no. Okay. The but, next agreement, perhaps. No. We're we're already. Providing sewer um, roughly all the way to, down past Roachton, are we not? Um, I think our sewer goes down to almost Brookhaven. Five, five points. Right yeah, Brookhaven, I, Brookhaven the farthest. South. That's what I thought, and and then all the way over to the river, roughly. Uh, so Hall Prairie Road. Right, because yes. there is some Wood, Wood County water and sewer in there. Too. Yes, west yeah. of Hall Prairie Road, the sewers 
go to across the river to the Lucas County plant. Yeah. Through the Northwest Farm Service. Right. And then east it goes all the way up what the Thompson? No. Uh, we don't, we don't Our sewers. Yeah, we don't go down five points in the east of twenty five. We we have just two I think eight point pounds. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. we don't have anything beyond that. Okay. So, so that, since we're speaking of overflows, the meters that are in the budget, do those those indicate frequency, obviously. Yes. Does it does it also reflect volume? Yes. Yes. Because, because we typically hear of the frequency. Mm -hmm. So okay, so these yes. meter, these new meters, or no, those this, that's the least meter least L E A S E D are continuing. We're, okay, we that's just the continuation. Okay. Yeah. Well, you pointed them out, and I thought maybe that was different. Yeah. So. If I may ask about how many events did we have over this weekend? Okay. Um, oh, this is small. You know, that's a frequent question in this community. Yes, it, it is. is. It is <laughs> you know, <laughs> I tell you well, what. How they had across the river? We can't get well, lots of those. Well, uh, it's, it's based upon rainfall, so you know you get so much rainfall, you yeah. get to get events. I mean, oh no! And considering we got, almost, we got the spreadsheet too. I'll yes. send the spreadsheet that Alice and Matt have prepared that talks about this year, um, the dates uh, that over, that CSOs occurred, mm -hmm. the location of those CSOs, whether it was Elm Street, Locust, Cherry, Louisiana Avenue. Uh, one one thing about the CSO is keep in mind our plate has capacity. Even in a wet weather events, what's happening though is that our only interceptor is kind of a pinch point in some ways that the flow can get through that to the plant fast enough without having that, that CSO. The so mommy the interceptor is where? where the mommy interceptor that's running along the river, um, Water Street, down to the plant. Where the multi use the path is going to go? Mm -hmm. yeah. So, <laughs> yes, yes. And then, um, so one of the things that we are picking back up, and I'll say more in the dust off house and I'll just talk about it today, is you know, we have this lovely document that he found worked with us, um, and everybody had one for this, one for the industry SSO, is we have to get EPA to give us a blessing on what route we can take to alleviate those CSOs, and we need to do it like now. So we're drafting, we're drafting a letter to the EPA saying, we want to do this, this, and this. Give us the go so that we can put those items in the budget and get working on either putting a parallel CS, uh, parallel interceptor down there, expanding the, you know, taking the existing one out and putting a water pipe in. And, and there's some other options. I think there's like three or four options to reduce those CSO. But we have a document. We have to start acting on it. But what yeah, they the for a long time. Between that document and now. But the infiltration is where that's coming from because that those should not be overflowing if we did not have storms going into the into the sanitary. I don't know if it's all I and I. I don't I don't know that we, we, we I, I don't know. I don't, I don't because where else would it be coming from? It's in, yeah, it's in the older part of the town. Yes. Part we have not updated yet is where right. it's coming from. Yeah. As well as more with water and sewage. Exactly. And, and I mean, October is probably terrible. It's the second wettest October in the recorded history since the 1800s. I mean, we have over a foot of rain. It goes so, up crazy. You have to incur it the household, not it. So the for the area. areas, can you? I know that there's a map out there that shows the areas that are really what is causing the overflows that are going right into this pinch point. Is there something because it would be great for us to have that when we get those questions, we can show where the affected area is and that we're still working on the because, you know, one of the, the question again was, you know, we're having all these overflows, yet we're still allowing more houses to come in. Um, I, I reply back and remind that, you know, that those homes are going and are not going to affect that pinch point. But to have something that we can point to as evidence would be wonderful uh, as just a way to show that you know we're, we're still working on this. We have money set aside. We're trying to move forward with this. We want to move forward with it. 
It's just trying to find those those right answers. Yeah. It, but the percentage is really low. Am I not right for the overflows, even with the Monterey? Well, I appreciate that the city actually, they, they yeah. the village burn cans at all. Monterey. Right. Yeah. And, and, and I think the only reason it's an issue is because certain other governmental entities are not complying. Exactly. So they're projecting that on us. I'm not saying we're perfect, but we're, but our percentages are not. We're working very well. Yeah, we're like at 85, 90% of compliance and not overflows, which is pretty good if you ask me. Is it perfect? No. Do we have work to do? Yes. Yeah. And I don't disagree. And, I, and, I, and I'm assuming as well that the reason for the delay of finishing the multi use path along the river is what we're going to be able to do with this intercept. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. This, that was a question I was going to be asking about later as well, but uh, I think I know the answer now after this conversation. I just, I just find it frustrating. You skipped the running grass for a while. I, I know. It, it's a little hard to push a stroller. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even try walking. It was I, I don't run down there when it's raining like this because it's... We were down there yesterday. It was terrible. Yeah. Is there any uh, anything else for the good of the committee? No. All right, hearing none, we will go ahead and adjourn. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you for your time tonight. Thank you for all the information. <laughs>